Okay everyone, we're at a fork in the trail and um, we're going to go down this way here to your right, my left and we're going to go into the black mangrove forest so follow me please and uh, watch for the ruts here Okay, we're now going to be going into the black mangrove forest and we're going to be going up on a boardwalk here and I want to call your attention to the fact that Oftentimes, a lot of leaves up here on the boardwalk, and when it gets wet, this can be very slippery, so please be careful and watch your step. Uh, I want to also want to point out to you that we're coming off the uh, maritime hammock, the elevation over there, five to six feet, and you can see it gradually going down to perhaps about one, fifth, one foot above sea level. So it's going to be kind of a highly saline environment in here. Now we have our friends the mangroves back again. Uh, we have the red mangrove here. Uh, there's a buttonwood tree right here with those long furrows on it. And over there, that black tree, that's a black mangrove. And we'll have some white mangroves in here a little further up the trail here. Now the difference between uh, the black mangrove forest and the tidal swamp is that uh, the tidal swamp is inundated twice a day. Here, the forest gets inundated only during periods of uh, storm, particularly in the winter months. The salt water will invade this area. Uh, we did, it did rain last night, so we do have a lot of rain in here, fresh water that accumulates in here. So. This is, since it's a wetland and it's dominated by trees, it is a, called a swamp. But, since it's not inundated like the sw tidal swamp is, we have a lot of other vegetation growing in here. For example, this one right here, uh, this one right here is a threatened plant. It's called a Florida Mayten. Uh, they're quite rare. Uh, as far as we know, this is the only uh, place where this particular species grows in Lee County. Here now is a white mangrove. Uh, the white mangroves like to be at a little higher elevation. They can take salt water into nation. Uh, they prefer not to get a lot of it though. Um, they have the main characteristics that allow them to survive in a highly saline environment like the other mangroves have. Um, very neat plant with these little oval leaves. And let's see what else do we have here. That's interesting. Let's go over here. Uh, right here all the stuff growing up around here green stuff like this this is called this is a lichen uh, which is a combination of a fungus and an algae and they come in different forms and shapes and colors now the water table uh, might be less than a foot down uh, and whatever grows down here has to have a strategy for surviving in the salt. Uh, we know how the mangroves do it, but here the vegetation that grows here are succulents. That they, they have rather large leaves to them, or very, very fat leaves, and sometimes the, the strategy will be to collect and hold water in their leaves and in their stems. But oftentimes their metabolic rates entirely different. Instead of using water for, to metabolize, they'll use an acid. So that's how these particular ones, this is, this is called a salt wort right here. Over here, let's see if I can find something else. Uh, yes, right here. Another succulent right here. You see that very kind of a fat leaf right there? There's a f little yellow flower like that. It's a member of the aster family. It's you know, like a little store water in that leaf so, so it can survive. Uh, here we go. The plant right here looks like a 
the herb rosemary. This is called Christmas berry. You notice that little fat little leaf there? That's an indication that it too is a succulent. It likes to store water in that leaf. Uh, right around Christmas time, it will have a little red berry. That's how it got its name, Christmas berry. Well, that concludes our walk of the black mangrove forest. <laughs>